So what if we took the latest model of ChatGPT, GPT-5, and combined it in our Godot game development workflow from inception to completion, from game design to game programming? That's what we're going to be seeing in this video. And literally, let's start from the very scratch. Whenever we want to create a project, we must have a name. So with this super simple prompt, let's start with this adventure. So here you have some game ideas and game titles. So I person like this one, for example, dodge the square, for example. So let's just call it like this and I will save it into the corresponding folder that I want. And I will press create. And in the meantime, let's just do let's go with dodge the square. How do we start with the project? Maybe with the player. And here it's pretty interesting that it's even thinking longer for a better answer. So in GPT-5 we have it's the auto mode, which will decide between instant and thinking based on uh, what you want. Okay, uh, so it's basically that. So sometimes when you request it more complex code, it will automatically switch to thinking mode. But in this case, it was a pretty simple question. So interesting that they are automatically GPT decided to use thinking mode. Still was just 11 seconds. But anyway, here we have the first step, which is create a new project. We've done it, create a scene main node to this, save it as main.tscn and set it as the main scene. So let's do it. So pretty good step-by-step -step process. Let's save it. It didn't tell us how to make it the main scene, so I know how to make it the main scene. We can press here and select current, for example, or go to project, project settings, and here run. But well, we didn't have the specific steps. Then add a character body to just a child named player. Hmm, I wouldn't do it like this. I would create a brand new scene for this, but anyway, let's call it player. Add a sprite to the and a collision shape. So that's good. Okay, and basically also told us to load in a placeholder and some collision. As I can see, I'm working pretty fast, but just so that you don't get bored. Give the player a brain, a brain, sorry, step two, attach this to player. So let me copy this code and I will attach it to the player directly there and I will paste it in. Uh, so here's getting the screen rectangle to basically clamp the player. So that's not bad at all. Mm -mm -mm. And okay, here we have a four way movement. I wasn't expecting this. Uh, because if the idea is that the squares fall from the sky, what we need is like a platformer movement with gravity, not if an eight way movement, I believe. But well, let's see if the code works. But yes, it seems that it does. It doesn't seem that diagonally it moves faster also. So that's cool. And also let's check the clamping if it actually works. Oh yeah, it works. So pretty amazing in that way. Uh, and this mar oh, okay, here we have the margin. Okay, that's not bad. Um, so until now, everything perfect. So let's just say, let's continue. And let's see what model it ends up using. Okay, it's using, once again, the thinking mode. So let's check how much time it takes. Okay, just 10 seconds and the answer has started. So it was still pretty fast. So make the enemy scene, new scene, area 2D. So in this case, it is managing at the, as a different scene. Once again, I would have created the player as its own scene. It's way more organized, but anyway, that's just, uh, well, not a personal preference. It's a convention. We also need a sprite, a collision with a rectangle shape and a script. So the usual things that you would have. Okay. I don't have a, a circle. So don't think I will do loading this. I will make it smaller and I will also tint it with the modulate like red. There it is. And let's also add just a circle because it's the easiest shape. And let's save this. Okay, there we go. We also have to attach this. Let's copy the code, paste it right here. Okay, there we go. Connect, body entered. Hmm, I don't know if this still works because how you connect to signals is like this, like you call the uh, signal dot connect and here the receiver method. So on body enter so you do it like this uh so i don't know this way i think it was like this in code of three i don't know if this is deprecated if it works 
whatever it is. Then uh, in process, this is correct. Position plus equals is correct. If it gets out of the screen, Q3, I wouldn't do it with this. I would do it with the another that's called uh, on screen visibility notifier or something like that's called. Visible on screen notifier truly with this thing that detects if it is out of the screen, but you know, it's not that bad. In reality, it's okay. I wouldn't check the body name with the name. I would check it with a group or something like that, but it's okay. And if it collides with the player, it gets reloaded. So actually it's a pretty, pretty good logic. Okay, then we have to add a spawner to main in main.tscn, add a node child name called spawner, and we have to attach this script. So, okay, let's do it. Uh, node to d, all circles spawner. Let's attach a new script. Let's paste the code, and here we have it. So, first of all, uh, randomize does not have really to be called anymore on ready. This was once again something that was done in Go 3, but I think it was from Gold 4 that this is automatically called um, on start, on, on ready basically. Um, here, the function is called automatically when the project is run. Okay, so you don't really have to call it here. And then you have to create a timers unit with delta, which is not bad, but you would do this in Unity, for example. Uh, but why not you may use a timer? Like it is way easier to count the time and all this, but anyway, there it is. But I think the logic is overall good, okay? Well, not good, but here, how it name variables EW, like why this name, man? Like type them. This is the enemy scene, okay? This should be called enemy instance, this W. Why W here? It doesn't have anything to do with the viewport rec size X. I don't know. Um. And then this thing, if E has variable, these things I've never used has variable, literally. I don't know why it's like that. Uh, and then it's setting, what did that set does? It's setting the speed to getting here the speed plus a random number. Why don't have an init function there rather than this? Or do it directly in the script here of the enemy. So as you can see, a lot of inconsistencies or things that are done in a way that is, let's say, not normal or the usual way in super simple cases, okay? But anyway, let's see if we had to do other thing. You already have a player.gd, add a player to a group, so future... Okay, and now it is using a logic, it is using a group. So uh, let's add it to the player group. Player. And this is in... Okay, yes, if you fair group check, swap the enemy GD collision line. So this is good. This should be like this. And now we should just have to run it. Uh, but earlier here, here also GPT told us to load in the scene. Yeah. Enemy, and here we have the spawn delay, minimum delay, difficulty step. So we also have some, let's say, progression system. Uh... Okay, we had a problem here. non existent function has variables. So yes, this thing really does not exist, at least on the version that I am for 4.4.1 stable. Maybe in GoPro 3 it did exist, I don't know. But well, here they are. So we have a different speed, we can move around. Okay, and if we collect with them, okay, the game is reset basically. So it's not that bad. Of course, I wouldn't have made the controller like this. I would have made it um platformer okay not like this with i wouldn't have added the gravity and all that but you know it's not that bad in fact it has done what 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 we asked it to do once again here we have some problems already this is because it's not using call deferred yeah here this should be with call deferred basically uh, get stream i'm i'm gonna cut this line uh, call deferred and the method name is gonna be this one so with this one, I'm gonna get rid of that error. Probably ChatGPT could also spot that. Yeah, there it is. But anyway, you know, it's not that bad. Uh, so my conclusion here is that it is something that helps you, definitely. You can check how literally nine minutes and a, and, and, and half we've been able to make something playable. So indeed, it has a lot of power because if we would have to code it on my on your own, if you were a 100% beginner, you, you could have taken way more time. Um, and if you are even an experienced developer, just like writing all this code on your own, connecting the logic, all that could have taken more time. Of course, the logic is not 
very good. I would, I would give it a 7 out of 10. I don't like these variables being like super... Where, why dire or dear? Just direction. Put it there. Why P here? Call it my position. I don't know. Something. Not not just letters. This is super, this is super bad practice. Um, but overall, yes, it is. I believe it still has a lot of work to be done. It is, I believe, definitely better than previous models of ChatGPT. Uh, it is better. Okay. But, well, it is just an assistant, and it's not an assistant that is that polished, okay? Um, it is way more polished if you're using, for example, Unity and C-sharp. For that, it literally works, I wouldn't say flawlessly, but way better. Uh, so that's it. That's my conclusion, okay? And something that you also have to know is that in, in the description of this video, what you can have is have access to all my courses, okay? With one month free and 60% off your first month with this link, which will... Um, give you my Skillshare customized link. So as you can see here, I'm literally sharing a, or a gifting one month free of Skillshare, okay, which will give you access to all my courses. This, these are just three of seven courses. And of course, uh, you can also buy them separately in Udemy. If you want, all these links tend to have limited time discounts. So from here, you have some which are about to expire. And here you can get this Google course, this other Google course, this other Google course. But the good thing about Skillshare is that by just paying one subscription monthly, you get access to all of them. So just one payment. But here you can also buy them separately. Okay. We have, a, I have in the moment three Google courses, one ChatGPT course, and one Unity course. Okay. So that's all for this video. And I will see you in the next one.